Hello, my name is Sean Panter, and uh, I wanted to talk to you today about Power Automate Document Automation. So Document Automation provides you with the ability to leverage the AI capabilities of the Power Platform to be able to process documents that are triggered or pushed into a pipeline, perhaps, uh, via email or a file drop. Uh, the really great thing about Power Platform Document Automation is that it actually comes as a solution. So Microsoft has done all this great work uh, leveraging the Power Platform. Uh, to provide you with this very easy way to get started with document automation. Uh, it does require a little bit of deployment and configuration, but it's a surprisingly small amount of effort for the value that you're going to be able to, to get from this uh, great solution. So the tools that Microsoft is leveraging here, first and foremost, we have AI Builder. So you have the ability to train an AI model that you're going to apply to the documents that come through the pipeline. Power Automate is leveraged as the automation tool that takes care of all the processing behind the scenes. And finally, uh, Power Apps provides us with an interface that the process owners and the approvers can actually use uh, out of the box to be able to take the files after the AI has run and to, to validate them. This is a complete solution that you get, and it's it's very close to ready to go as soon as you deploy it. Uh, to Microsoft on, on creating this excellent tool for us to get started so easily with. Let's talk a little bit about features and benefits. As I said earlier, you can just download and deploy this solution uh, from the Power Automate portal. And uh, I'm just gonna quickly go over there and we'll have a quick look at uh, how to get started. Uh, so what you'll find is from within the Power Automate Makers portal, that you have document automation under AI Builder. So you can click the Get Started link and you're gonna see that you'll be walked through this whole process of getting to work with document automation in Power Automate. Uh, they provide you with a few great resources here that we'll talk about a little more. But as I said, uh, this is something that Microsoft obviously has made a significant investment in uh, so that we can all get started uh, very easily with document automation. So the really great part about this is it does allow you to leverage existing investments that you've made in AI. So if you have trained some AI processing models within AI Builder for forms processing, you can take those and actually move them into and leverage them in your document automation pipeline. Apps for process approvers and owners are also available to you as well. So that Power App that we're gonna see a little bit later has been created and is a very easy way for people to be able to manually review content that AI has ran against and they can validate it. There are pre-built flows. So there are three pre-built flows that you're gonna get as part of this solution. And I should have said and made this very clear that when you get started with document automation, Microsoft provides you with the solution file that is deployed onto uh, an environment within your Power Platform tent. Within that solution, you have a number of cloud flows, tables in the dataverse, the app that I just mentioned as well, and other resources to support the solution. Uh, but talking about the cloud flows here, uh, there are three cloud flows, one for importing. Uh, so you can configure how you would like to import uh, content into your pipeline. This may be the, or the out of the box uh, configuration that you're gonna get is that it will be ingested via Outlook. So you can point the trigger of this flow at an Outlook inbox, set some conditions on that trigger. And whenever emails come in with an attachment, they're gonna be moved through the pipeline. The next step is the process flow. This is where the AI is actually applied. So after a file is imported, it is processed. Finally, we have validation. So when a file uh, or yeah, I guess a file that the AI has ran against is validated by someone within the app, uh, there's, a, there's a very small flow that updates some data uh, on the occurrence of that event as well. So let's talk about the supported file types. Uh, the, the document automation tool provides you with support for PDF, JPG, and PNG file types. Uh, so you'll want to watch uh, in your automation to make sure that these these are the types of files that are going to be coming in. And maybe you need to put a check in there to make sure it is a supported file type if you expect that there may be some other ones coming in along the way. Uh, so that covers features and benefits. I wanted to quickly talk about licensing. One of the very important things that we do with all the solutions that we provide and deploy to our customers, first and foremost, we have the discussion about licensing. This is going to affect the total cost of ownership of a solution. Uh, in line with this, Microsoft has done an excellent job of making this very clear. So on that document automation page within Power Automate that we were looking at earlier, they've actually highlighted right in the FAQs what the licensing requirements are. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but uh, keep in mind that there is a cost of ownership uh, ongoing uh, with regards to licensing for these solutions. So what does that look like? 
uh, within Power Apps, I've been talking about this app and the, the reviewer or approver role that's going to be looking at the process AI or the AI process documents, I should say, that have come through the pipeline. They're going to be able to review and approve those in the app and they're going to need a premium license. So a per app or a per user license for that Canvas app. Uh, and then folks that are process owners that are going to go in and configure the pipeline and which AI model you want to leverage, they also are going to require a per app or per user license as that is a premium set of functionality within that app. So we've talked about these three flows. These are all premium flows as well. They are connecting to the Dataverse using cool stuff like AI Builder as well. So uh, keep in mind there's a premium license there that you'll have to supply. And then finally, we are leveraging AI Builder and you are going to need capacity units from within AI Builder uh, to effectively run your AIs. So that's another uh, carrying cost of the solution that you need to consider. All right, so let's just look quickly at uh, the AI Builder licensing is something we often get questions about. And if you go to the Power Apps pricing page, you're gonna see something just like this. Uh, and it tells you that AI Builder is $500 per unit per month. Uh, some people say, well, what does that actually mean? What am I getting for that? There's a great little calculator down here. So you can click on this link and it's gonna launch a page that looks like this. And you're gonna be able to actually input values. Uh, I, you can see here in this screenshot that we're talking about the business card reader, 5,000 business cards being processed. It's gonna equate to about one unit will be necessary for that. Uh, so you can scroll down and choose forms processing for the document automation and put in an estimate of how many uh, documents you think are going to be running through this, calculate that, and it's going to give you an idea of how many uh, AI builder units you would need to procure. So this is the last slide on licensing. I know it's not everyone's favorite topic, but very prudent when considering deploying a solution like this that uses premium features. So let's move on. So uh, I also wanted to highlight that Microsoft has done a very great job of documenting this. And I would recommend that you go over to the Microsoft Learn site. Uh, there's a link here that you can see in the deck that uh, is gonna point you over to a page that looks just like the one here. I started with this and, and I recommend that you do as well. So take the time, go through the Learn course. It's not gonna take you very long and you're gonna get a really good understanding, much better than the one I'm providing with in this video, I'm sure. Uh, so go to that Microsoft Learn site. You're also gonna be able to get some experience points in your uh, profile there as well if you go and do that. So it's a great way to, to get started and hit the ground running with that. So let's have a look at the technical process of what's happening here. Uh, I did take this image from, uh, I believe the homepage, it was either the learning lab uh, or the homepage of the document automation that we saw in the makers portal. The process that this solution is meant to address is something like this. So you have a business partner that is emailing you documents. They would email you a document. It would hit your service mailbox and then uh, Power Automate Flow would kick off. So the trigger is going to be um, the receipt of an Outlook message. And uh, as that is received, the flow is going to run on the trigger event, automatically storing that document in the Dataverse. And then uh, the process flow is going to run following that. And it's going to run the AI on the document and then send the outputs of that into the app. So the validator is gonna be able to go in, review that and approve it. So this is a manual step within the app that you're gonna see shortly where someone can actually review what the AI gleaned out of the document and then approve it or edit it if they feel as though it needs to be adjusted. So that's a very quick intro with regards to what's happening throughout this document automation process. So let's get into a very quick demo here. So we did already see uh, in the makers portal what this looks like, but uh, let's go back and have a quick look. So this is where I got started with everything, uh, but ultimately what's gonna happen when you're here is it's gonna deploy a solution into your tenant, as I said earlier, but where things actually get happening after you've set things up is uh, back on your desktop. And I'm going to uh, go into this nice demo folder that I have and look for the bills of lading. So the way that uh, I trained the AI model was on a couple of different bill of, bills of lading. So let's imagine that uh, our company does an awful lot of shipping. We use a couple of different shippers and they each pro provide us with their own unique bill of lading format. So this bill of lading document from Western uh, Tools uh, or for Western Tools uh, provided by West Coast Carriers. Uh, takes this form and here is the 
bill of lading form for AAA prime shippers. You can see that uh, the look of this document is visibly very different. And uh, it, this has an effect on our AI. So as we're training our AI to ingest different types of documents, uh, we need it to be aware of all these different forms of documents. So we have two very different bill of lading files coming from different shippers. So I'll get into how we trained the AI a little bit later, but let's actually just see this thing run to begin with. So I will go through and just pick one of these files that we didn't use when we trained the AI. So we can actually see this work. I'm gonna just send this to a mail recipient. That is me. And I'm going to say document automation in the subject line. So we wanna remember that I've done this. Uh, it's gonna come up for us later. So I will send this and now let's go over to the Power App. So I'm gonna go back into our document automation solution and I'm actually gonna launch uh, the app here. So this is the app that takes a few uh, or provides us with a few features. For process owners, they can go in and configure or for the approvers, they can actually look through all the documents that are coming through the pipeline. So we can see the one that we've just submitted right here. The data is currently being extracted. I can just refresh this status and it's going to give me a live update on uh, what's happening with this document. So you can click into any of these documents. I'm going to wait a minute until the data is extracted uh, while we're waiting for our uh, data extraction to happen back in Power Automate. Let's have a quick look at the configuration screen. Uh, so the default configuration that's been set uh, this is where the process owner is able to uh, choose from all of the AI builder models that have de been deployed in that environment. So we have trained a uh, an, an invoice AI. We also have this bill of lading AI. So we've, we're keeping the bill of lading AI active. And this is what's currently actually running for us in the background. Uh, we can actually jump over and, um, and build a new form processing model in AI builder right from here. We have this handy link. And if I move on to the next step, uh, we can see that uh, our app is actually aware of what fields are being extracted in that AI builder model. So this is really cool. Uh, Microsoft has connected this Power App, made it fully aware of the data that's being collected uh, via our AI. And we're able to see all these fields that are coming out uh, of that. And we can also see tables. So uh, both of those bill of lading documents have tables within them and the forms processing within AI Builder is table aware. We can actually train our AIs to process tables within these documents, which is very cool. So I'm not gonna actually go in and save the changes here. I'm actually happy with how this is set up. So we'll just leave it and let's go back and see how our document's doing. It is finished uh, the processing and it's now ready for manual review. So I'm gonna go over here and this is the document that was emailed that the AI uh, processed. And we have this nice interface for us provided by Microsoft. I, I didn't have to touch a single thing within this app, which is really cool. Uh, it's ready to go. As soon as you link it into your AI builder model, this app is something that can be very, very useful uh, for your business. So an approver can come in, review the document and make sure that all the information that was extracted by the AI actually matches up. So uh, we can see that the carrier looks good. The COD amount, let's go check that out. 1256, that looks accurate. So does the date and all this other information that uh, was taken off of the document by our AI. If we wanted to make an adjustment, we can do that. Let's say, for example, there was an issue with uh, some of the information that was being collected. We can very easily edit that and then choose to validate it. And that's gonna actually save the data back in the Dataverse. From there forward, we can decide what we wanna do with the data. So uh, the data is extracted, put into the Dataverse, and we can extend from there. So we have the op option of deleting the document if we needed to do that, or we can choose to validate it. So uh, before we validate it, I'm gonna go over to the tables. As I mentioned earlier, you can train your AIs also to process table data. And here's a look at the table. So we can see that we have a total of four packages, uh, weights of 19 and 12 pounds. So there's our 19 and 12. And here are our two packages. So it, it is also extracted the data out of that table perfectly. So I'm going to say this is valid and I'm going to validate it. I'm happy with it. And this data is now committed uh, back into the Dataverse. And we could, of course, extend our process and move the data wherever we needed to to continue the automation after that we're done. So that's a quick demonstration of how this whole thing works. So we uh, submitted the email into the inbox. 
And what happened after that was the flow ran. And I'm gonna take us for a quick walkthrough of uh, what those flows look like. So let's go into the email importer first. So I deployed the solution and the solution actually, uh, after I published it, um, linked up the email action to my account. And I didn't want uh, this flow running on every single email that hit my inbox, trying to run AI on all the attachments there. So um, I put a filter on this trigger. As I said, the ingestion point is email driven, just like we see here. And uh, you can put in filters and configure this trigger so it only runs under certain conditions. This is the only thing that I had to change in the deployment and it was ready to go. Uh, just put in that filter so it would only run on specific emails. And uh, from here forward, we can see we get more information about what's happening uh, with the file. We can see that there are all these actions in the Dataverse happening, getting the information and uploading the attachment uh, into the Dataverse. So that's the first thing that happens. Uh, moving along, let's look at the next cloud flow. And the processor flow takes the file uh, that has been extracted out of the email in the importer flow. Uh, it's based on a trigger event in the Dataverse. So it gets that attachment and, um, and determines which AI model is supposed to be used. Um, after that, it actually goes in and, and uh, processes the AI, runs it. You can see all these other updates happening in the Dataverse. Uh, we can see a number of actions here that Microsoft has, has used to make sure that all the information gets to where it needs to be uh, and finally uh, updates the status of that processing. So these two flows are responsible for the first half that gets it towards the app that we saw us working in. Uh, after we validate a document, the third flow runs and we can see this validator flow before us. Very simple, uh, just when the document automation processings are created, updated or deleted, we're syncing some data uh, back into uh, that table just to make sure we keep everything up to date. So that's a quick run through of what's happening on the side of Power Automate through this solution. So I'm gonna take one uh, last step towards AI Builder next. And let's have a quick look at the training of the model that we use to process our bill of lading forms. So I go into the bill of lading and uh, we have a look at this model and here's our training document. So we can see that uh, it gives us a preview of that. It, we can tell which fields are being extracted via this model. And uh, also we can see where it's being used from this front screen for our model. But uh, I'm gonna actually edit the model. And uh, normally you'd be able to click on the edit model button. I have an edit currently in draft. So I see this edit draft button. So I'm gonna go back a couple steps and uh, from the beginning, this is what you're going to see. When you go into train an AI model, you get to decide which fields of data you think are important to, to extract. So let's say that um, we have an ETA field in our document, our bill of lading. Uh, I can just uh, add that in as easily as we see here. Type in the field name, hit the plus sign. We have another field in our model that we can extract. Uh, and then the tables are very easy as well. We can choose to create a table uh, and then we would be, we would add in the column names for that table, just like we saw. So there's weight, size, whatever might be relevant there. So we've already done that work. We have package count and weight, but you can see how easy it is to get started. You basically just need to decide what information you need to extract uh, out of the uh, documents that are gonna be processed in the pipeline or by the AI. So the next step is gonna allow us to identify some, some documents and what, it, what actually happens here is we're using collections. So we can see that uh, we have two different types of bill of lading documents. The AAA prime shippers and the West Coast carriers both have different documents for their bill of lading. So the format is different. The AI needs to be aware of these different types of formats. And uh, when we go in we, uh, to train the collection, we can add in the files uh, and it's going to allow us to, to, to train the model based on real data. So in each of these collections, we can add in the documents that we would like to train against. As we move along here, uh, we can go into the next step and it's gonna allow us to actually tag the fields. So this is a very important step of training our AI. So it's loading in all the fields and uh, 
we'll see here, uh, it's this step actually leverages the work that we did earlier. So at the very beginning, we decided which data fields we needed to get out of the document. And in this step, we're going to actually tag those fields within the document itself. So there's our file. And this is a really nice interface. Uh, I'm going to actually remove the date tag. And uh, you'll notice we no longer have a green check mark there. But this is how you go about training your AI. Uh, you choose the field and then you go back to the document. And I like to zoom in a little bit and you can see that it actually highlights the fields. And I'm going to drag that over a little bit more and I can choose to remark that that field has officially been tagged and we now have a green check mark. So you would go through this process for every field that you'd like to train in your AI. So that's the way that uh, you build that intelligence is by showing it uh, where to extract the data from in this fashion. Same process for the tables as well. Uh, you can just go through a very similar set of steps and you'll notice that we've tagged the packages and weight uh, in this bill of lading document. So after that's done, um, you would go through and do that in both collections for the different formats of documents. So in each case, the AI is going to know where to look to extract the data. And the last step is uh, going to prompt us to retrain the model. I'm not going to go through and do that. I'm happy with how it's working now, but I wanted to give you an idea of what's happening there. So that covers uh, a very quick intro to document automation and uh, that great tool Microsoft's provided us with. So hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. Uh, it, it, at the very least, I hope gives you a bit of an understanding of what uh, is offered there and how you can take advantage of it. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out. Hit up that Microsoft Learn site to get trained up on this and uh, best of luck. I hope you have fun and success with this tool. Thank you.